forest types. We are getting samples from that area, and we are also isolating these strains. Then we are select, uh, isolating or getting the samples from some selected lakes in Pakistan. Let's say lake or actinomycetes diversity in lakes. Uh, uh, we have obtained some, some very useful strains from, from the, this source. Then uh, we're also getting samples from desert ecosystems. We have uh, uh, one or two major deserts in the central regions, so we are getting samples. Uh, side by side, we are also isolating endophytic actinomyces, especially some medicinal plants are very important in that area, which have been even mentioned in the Indian Ayurvedic. We are trying to isolate the endophytic actinomyces from those medicinal plants uh, uh, with the idea that maybe the, the act active compounds are really coming from the plants or from the endophytic uh, microorganisms present in them. We are also using soil metagenomic uh, technique uh, in order to get the uncultured diversity of these actinomycetes in, this in all these areas. Well, we are uh, targeting different uh, types of uh, pathogenic groups, uh, uh, especially uh, multidrug resistant bacterial pathogens, which uh, we, we, we are screening especially against MRSA and VRSA strains. Then we're also screening against uh, MDR mycobacterium tuberculosis. M MTB is a very serious issue in our area, so we are also screening these strains against them, then uh, against the Pseudomonas aeruginosa. Uh, we're also looking for anti-tumor and anti-cancer compounds from these sources and for the agroactive compounds from these sources. Uh, we use a very straightforward and uh, very commonly used methodology for this uh, work. We, we, we start with the isolation of the strains from different areas. We get uh, actinomycetes strains and then we take them to the first preliminary type of screening procedure where we screen them for different types of bioactivities uh, and uh, we look for some, some sort of competent strains or some sort of very, uh, I mean, useful strains from, this, from the bigger collection. And then side by side, uh, uh, further, the, the select a strain, we take them to the preparative screening level for the actual purification of the compounds and identification of the compounds by different methods. If we get some useful compounds and strains, we also take them towards uh, associated genetic and biosynthetic studies. Uh, in this talk, I'm just uh, going to present the results from one of our uh, this strains, Streptomyces species, KML2. This strain was isolated from uh, Kevra salt mines. Uh, actually, if you see on this map, uh, salt area, uh, this is actually, it's very close to uh, the capital Islamabad, just just about 200, 200 kilometers away from the Islamabad, is a salt range. Uh, this is almost uh, the area with the radius of 100 to 150 kilometers where the salt rocks and salt mines are present. So we get samples from this area, and uh, we isolate the strain from these Kevra salt mines. Uh, you can have just the view of how this, this uh, mountainous area looks like. This is just the upper photograph is from the entrance of the mines. We go into the mines and then uh, after one, two kilometers, we, we, we got the samples from inner side. This is the lower one is the inner side of the mines from where the samples were collected. Uh, in this region, this is also one lake. Uh, this is a very important lake with the brackish and very salty water. And uh, I have worked with the uh, actinomycid diversity of this lake, and we isolated a large number of uh, strains with good activity, especially against MRSA strains from this area. Uh, well, this is the uh, Streptomyces species, KML2, that was isolated. This, is, uh, this strain is typically Streptomyces strain with the uh, uh, reddish type of substrate mycelium and uh, pale to yellowish uh, aerial mycelium, aerial spores. And uh, we, we, we identified these strains. The taxonomic studies were done with the, by using all the traditional microbiological approach and then with the genetic identification methods. So the strain has uh, a sort of uh, aerial mycelium is detachable, pale and yellow color. Uh, substrate mycelium is abundant, red, and uh, the, it has the ability to grow, to, to use different carbon sources, especially glucose is very common for all these streptomyces, but it also uh, used lactose and uh, uh, mannitol and mannose as a carbon source for, for its fermentation process. Uh, we identified further it with the 16SRRN gene sequencing uh, with, with the, the simple method of with isolation of genomic DNA and then getting PCR amplifications on s s sequencing the gene. And uh, after blast analysis in NCBI, uh, we, we got, got the genetic similarity of the strain with, the uh, with one streptomyces strain. And then this gene, uh, the, the gene sequence data was submitted to the gene bank for, uh, for this accession number. Well, uh, streptomyces KML2, uh, it exhibited maximum similarity, 100% similarity with streptomyces griseus. 
and uh, with in this cluster analysis, uh, this phylogenetic tree, which was constructed by using mega four uh, software with by neighbor joining method at uh, 1000 bootstrap value. Uh, it clusters with specifically you see with the uh, uh, Streptomyces griseus especially, and uh, this strain was identified then. Well, uh, in pre-screening pre studies, when we, we were just looking for this strain with, with other strains, it, it did not exhibit a very appreciating response as antimicrobial uh, strains, but its cytotoxicity was very high. We just gave the indication to, to maybe have some, some antitumorous compounds or something highly cytotoxic in this strain. We take the extract to the simple MTT assay. We found the IC50 uh, values for, uh, for the extracts against three different cell lines, against HeLa, it gives 12.17 IC50 value, MDBK 47.88, and Vero cell lines 56.12. <coughs> well, this is, well, this strain was taken into the preparative screening, uh, uh, and we cultivated it in a, as a shaking class culture up to 20 liters. And uh, uh, then we, we, we processed it with solvent extractions. We got about 1.5 gram of crude extraction in 20 liters shaking to class culture, and which was further purified, and we were able to purify two molecules from this crude extract, which were further identified by mass spec and NMR uh, spectroscopic uh, procedures. Uh, the compound one was chromomycin assay, and the second one, this one is indole 3 propane triol molecule. Uh, this is how it was purified by the manual column chromatography on silica gel, and then finally with the sulfuric cell H20 chromatography. Uh, the, 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 this is UP uh, LCMS spectrum for the compound one, which is, gave the mass 1125.48, uh, uh, and then the proton NMR spectrum simply confirmed it as uh, necromycin SA. Uh, uh, we have seen from the literature the chromomycin assays has been already reported from uh, streptomyces griseus strain, and it is uh, exhibit uh, good activity against HeLa cell lines. Uh, uh, so uh, this was, I mean, already reported compound from the streptomyces, but this is just a th almost a third report with the, with the streptomyces griseus uh, uh, as the production or, or the producer of chromomycin assay. For the second compound, the mass spec, uh, we, we get this molecule with mass 208 and with the proton NMR spectrum. It was just uh, a bit difficult to, uh, to, to find of the compound with this data, so we further uh, proceeded with the 2D NMR experiments and we got uh, uh, different uh, two-dimensional experiments like COSI correlations and uh, uh, HSQC, HMBC analysis, and then finally NOSI. And with the interpretation of this data, we finally reach up to the molecule, uh, which is uh, uh, this one indole thiol propane one, two, three, triol. Now, interestingly, this molecule uh, has not been reported from streptomyces previous, previously as to the, to the best of our information. Uh, we, we are now again trying to, for the reproducibility of the strain, whether it's really from this streptomyces strain or um, uh, basically it is reported from fungal strains. The molecule is reported from fungal strain. So, uh, <coughs> as a conclusion, uh, we can say that this streptomyces griseus KML2, our isolate, is a stable producer of uh, uh, chromomycin assay and this indole molecule. And uh, as such, we can say that this is the first report of the production of this uh, indole molecule from any of the streptomyces uh, strain. Well, I will acknowledge my lab colleagues for, for this support in work. Uh, I'm also thankful to Dr. David Riechel uh, from Canada. Uh, he helped to identify the structure of the molecules from this strain, uh, and then the financial support of this study was from Higher Education Commission of the Pakistan, so uh, we are also thankful to them. So thank you. Yes, it has anti we, we We tried with the pure compound as well. It, it exhibit anti-tumor activity. But we're not sure this is non-specific cytotoxicity or really the anti-tumor activity. <laughs>